Hi, this is Brad Linder with Little Computing, and this is the Huawei MateBook X Pro, which is a premium laptop with an all-metal design, a 13.9-inch 3000 by 2000 pixel display, and it ships with Windows 10, but I wanted to see how it performs with Ubuntu. So I went ahead and loaded that from a USB flash drive, which you can see over here. It's uh, pretty easy to do. All you need to do is load uh, Ubuntu or another operating system on that flash drive, and turn on the computer and press the F12 key during the boot sequence, and that gets you uh, where we are. It has, as I mentioned, a 3000 by 2000 pixel display. It's a pretty nice screen with very slim bezels, and the camera is not above the display. It's actually down here in the keyboard area, which is one of the things I really wanted to see how it works under Ubuntu. For the most part, everything works pretty nicely here. I was able to connect to the internet pretty quickly and easily, uh, as you've probably already noticed here. The touchscreen works for the most part. There's a couple of weird quirks. So for instance, if I wanted to show all applications using the touchpad, pretty easy to do. If I do it with my finger, it does that. And I think it's because it's registering it as a double tap, which is sort of weird. Uh, so for certain things, the touchscreen works. For others, it doesn't work quite perfectly. Um, but let's go ahead and open a web browser. You can see that the overall experience is pretty good. And here, if I wanted to, I could scroll using the side of the screen and so on. I ran Geekbench, and the scores are pretty similar to what you would see if you ran the same test in Windows. And keyboard shortcuts, for the most part, work. So we've got volume and the brightness and so forth. Hi, this is Brad Linder with Little Hewden, and this is the Razer Blade Stealth, which is a thin and light laptop from Razer. So that is a quick look at some of the basic functionality. Again, uh, most of these keyboard shortcuts work, including, actually, I should uh, make sure that you can see this properly, the backlit keyboard. So F3 turns it on, and F3 turns it off. Uh, now, there's a couple of keys that don't work. So, for instance, if you keep an eye up here where the wireless logo is, or uh, you'll notice nothing changes when I hit the button that's supposed to toggle that. Same goes for the uh, F7 key, which also functions as a mute key. So those don't work. Um, but everything else is pretty much fine. And then in terms of the camera, no problems there. So we're going to go ahead and open up the Cheese camera application. and. Pull up the camera and you notice that it works just fine. The little status light is lit up so that you can see that it is on. I don't know how well that shows on film here, but if I make it go away, I can still take a picture. It's just that the camera is now pointing at the inside of the computer. So the camera is actually on as long as the application is open. Now you do have the same problem uh, because of the camera placement that you would get with Windows, which is that if you're typing while you're using it, you're going to sort of get that awkward angle, and it does sort of take a look right up your nostrils. Um, Huawei's decision to put the camera here is basically that you need a camera. You can't really sell a laptop without a camera these days, but people don't use it that often. So if you really need a high-quality camera and a better place camera, you can always get a clip-on one or USB or something along those lines. But for basic video calls, video conferencing, and whatnot, this will do. Uh, it's not great, but it works. And so we can just take a quick picture there. And if I close the application, you'll notice that the little light on the camera itself should turn off to show us that the camera is not in use. And then you can close that to make sure that it's really not in use. Uh, so for the most part, things work pretty well. The, uh, the other thing that I noticed is that out of the box, the display um, everything sort of looks pretty good. I can read the text, I don't have any problem with that. But if you wanted to adjust the settings, you could go into the display options and change the scaling. Now the only options that I see here are 100%, 200%, or 300%. Out of the box it selects 100, 
I mean, uh, 200. If we switch to 100, everything gets really, really tiny because that's 3,000 pixels across and 2,000 pixels up and down and just 13.9 inches. Um, so it's not necessarily something that I would recommend doing. Likewise, if you think that the screen is too sharp for you at 200%, you could go to 300%. Uh, I think this is almost the opposite problem. Um, now, if you have poor eyesight or uh, low vision, this could actually be useful, but I think for most people with something resembling 20-20 vision, and I've only got that because of my glasses, uh, this is pretty good. In fact, let me take off my glasses. Now, with my glasses off, I can't even see that. So 200% uh, I think is the more comfortable option, and it's nice to have these uh, options in here. In Windows, I actually find that 175 is pretty comfortable. That's not something that I have quick and easy access to here. Uh, the touchscreen is probably the most disappointing thing, the fact that it's got a couple of quirks that make you do that. Um, maybe it's something that could be addressed via software issues. Now, I'm running Ubuntu from this USB flash drive, uh, so I haven't really tested battery life or long-term performance. Um, that's something that I'll leave it up to somebody else to do, but the out-of-the-box experience is pretty good. You've got these forward top-facing speakers, which are just as loud and clear as they are in Windows. The laptop speakers are never going to win any real awards for sound, but they're some of the best that I've heard on a laptop this size. Um, we've got a nice large touchpad, and this model, which, uh, which Huawei sent me to review, is a $1,500 version with a Core i7 quad-core processor, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, and NVIDIA MX150 graphics. Uh, for $1,500, it's not cheap, but if you compare it to uh, comparably spec devices, it's actually a pretty good price, especially since it's only $300 more than the version that Huawei sells that has Core i5, 8 gigs, 256 gigs, and no discrete graphics, just Intel HD graphics. Uh, I'll have more details about the laptop, including uh, more about the specifications, the design, performance, benchmarks, and so forth at lilliputing.com in the near future. Uh, or it depends when you watch this, maybe it's already up there. Um, but I wanted to take a quick look at Ubuntu Linux performance in this video. So you can stay tuned to lilliputing.com and this YouTube channel for more information about the Huawei MateBook X Pro. And uh, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.